This video will discuss one of the most elegant constructions used in the field of dynamics, called, called quaternions. Quaternions are something of a generalization of complex numbers. So let's start by uh, a brief review uh, of what we do with complex numbers. And again, they're uh, invented by Euler, um, and they start from the construction i squared is equal to negative 1. So once you accept that construction uh, and define a commutative algebra based on it, you can, for instance, multiply two complex numbers in the following way. So if you have q is equal to c plus si, and z is equal to a plus bi, and take z prime is equal to q times z, we just multiply together c plus si and a plus bi, treating i as just an ordinary algebraic variable. And then after we multiply them together, first outside, inside, last, then we take the i squared and replace it with negative 1 to get an expression like that. Now what Euler showed was that in the case that we take q is equal to e to the i phi, what we develop uh, if, you, if you write out the series is that the real part becomes cos phi and the imaginary part becomes i sine phi. And so in this case if we have q is equal to e to the i phi, we get cos phi plus i sine phi, we'll take c as being cos phi and s as being um, sine phi. And so that will be um, a notation um, that we'll use um, in this discussion quite frequently, c being cos phi and s being sine phi to simplify the notation. Okay, so in this case, when we have um, a, uh, an e to the i phi, defining c and s, then the product of q times z simply corresponds to a rotation, a 2D rotation. And we can see that by writing z out as some vector, z vec uh, prime is a prime and b prime, and z vec is just a, b. So we're going to write this out in a vector form, and the corresponding operation to what we're doing with this um, complex number product simply is z vec prime is equal to something times z vec, where that something is just a 2D rotation matrix. And so you multiply this together, you get exactly what we have there. Um, and so this is then quite interesting that we can achieve 2D rotations quite naturally in the complex plane. And 2D rotations are naturally commutative operations. So if we have some object, we do a 2D rotation by some angle alpha, we do another 2D rotation by some angle beta, then that's equivalent to doing a rotation by beta first and then a rotation by alpha. So order doesn't matter when doing a 2D rotation. So that's why it makes sense that q times z is the same as z times q when q and z are complex numbers. Okay, that's a starting point. And then what Hamilton tried to do, and it took a bit of effort, uh, was to figure out the correct generalization of complex numbers in order to consider how to do 3D rotations. And it was really a stroke of genius um, when he figured out how to do it. He was actually going for a walk in the countryside, um, and legend has it he carved it um, in the uh, in the Broom Bridge in Dublin, Ireland. So if you ever go to Ireland, uh, please go by and check it out and see if you can find that bridge. Send me an email and a picture. Um, and uh, so the relations that define all of quaternion arithmetic are simply i squared is equal to j squared is equal to k squared is equal to i j k is equal to negative one, defining a non-commutative algebra. And uh, so essentially what we have is three, not one, but three distinct square roots of negative one. Um, i is the square root of negative one, j is the square root of negative one, and k is the square root of negative one. Um, and um, with a non-commutative algebra defined this way, we can then infer several properties. For instance, if we take this expression, put it in brackets, so i times j times k is equal to negative 1, multiply from the right by k, uh, then we're going to have i times j times k squared, well that's a negative 1, so we'll have minus ij on the left is equal to minus k on the right, and so uh, uh, cutting the minus signs out, what we get is ij is equal to k. And if you keep on going, you can get all of these other relationships listed here. And so when working with quaternions, um, we build up, and as, as implied by the prefix, a uh, four-component vector. Instead of a two-component vector here with a real and imaginary part, now we're going to have a four-component vector with a real part and three imaginary parts. So for instance, P, the, qua the quaternion P, can be written out as 
P0 plus P1i plus P2j plus P3k. Um, and uh, another quaternion Q can be written out in terms of its four parts, Q0 plus Q1i plus Q2j plus Q3k. Then if you take the product of this four component quaternion P with this other four component quaternion Q, multiply them together, you're going to get 16 components, four of which um, will, after you apply all of these identities, um, go into the real component R0, four of which, after you apply these identities, will multiply i, four will multiply j, and four will multiply k. And so it can be shown <coughs> that if you multiply together p and q in this form, uh, then the four components that come together from f to, to form r naught can be found by taking these four components times these four components in terms of a standard matrix vector product. So the first row times the first column gives r naught. The second row times this column gives r1. The third row times this column gives r2. And the fourth row times this column gives r3. So now might be a good time to pause this video and verify that you multiply together these two four component quaternions, you get 16 components, which is equivalent to this matrix vector product. Seriously, go ahead and stop the video and do that product, okay? Good. Okay, so now, um, moving on, uh, we're going to sometimes find it convenient to rewrite a quaternion in terms of its real component plus its component in the three imaginary directions, which I'll denote with the vec symbol. So for instance, p, we can write as p0 plus p vec, where p vec has components in the i direction, the j direction, the k direction. So this vec notation will be very special when discussing quaternions. We'll only use the vec on top uh, when we're referring to um, a uh, a component that just has um, elements in the i, j, and k directions, like that. All right. So using that notation, we can then think of the um, generalization of e to the i phi as e to the u vec phi, um, where u vec again is a three-component vector with components in the i, j, and k direction, as written out here. So e to the u vec phi becomes, that was developed by, uh, by, by Hamilton when he developed quad, uh, uh, quaternions, becomes, if you, uh, if you multiply uh, all, all of this out and develop the appropriate series expansion and see how it converges, what you get is cos phi plus u vec times sine phi, where u vec again is u1i plus u2j plus u3k. So that's the generalization of the concept of, of e to the i phi. So now what we can do um, is uh, develop the rest of the um, mathematics um, surrounding um, quaternions. And then with that, we're going to be able to not just do 2D rotations, as we could with complex numbers, but we'll actually be able to do 3D rotations and work up to Rodriguez's rotation formula, which is very rewarding. Well, all the math that you need is right here. Um, and so. Um, First, we define something called the conjugate of a, uh, of a quaternion. And again, we're going to write the quaternion in terms of its real part um, and its vec part in the uh, complex directions i, j, and k. Um, and so we're going to write p is p0 plus p vec. Um, then the conjugate of p is defined as p star is just p0 minus p vec. And so the conjugate of a product is equal to the product of the conjugates. You'll recognize some of these notions as similar to what you had in linear algebra. The conjugate of the conjugate is just the original vector. To get to the real part of q0, you just add q and q conjugate and divide by 2. And to get the vec part of q, you just add, uh, subtract uh, q minus q star and divide by 2. Right? So those are um, convenient constructions. And then we define the norm of q as being the square root of q times q star. Uh, pause for a moment here. The, the, we're, we're taking products of quaternions here, just as we took products of complex numbers up here. Right? So normally, in, in linear algebra, if I give you a vector, and I said multiply this vector and that vector, you can't do it. You can take an inner product, multiplying the transpose of one vector times another, or an outer product, but you can't take a vector times a vector. It's not a defined operation. But it's uh, perfectly well defined um, in, uh, com complex arithmetic, treating i as an algebraic variable and, uh, and 
um, performing the arithmetic in a commutative uh, uh, operation, so qz is going to be equal to zq, and we can easily um, do it, uh, multiply together to uh, uh, quaternions um, uh, in, uh, in uh, the quaternion arithmetic, and this is going to be a non-commutative um, algebra. So if we multiply together p times q, we'll get this. If we multiply together q times p, we're going to get something different. Um, and so. Anyway, uh, the, the norm of a vector q is, is defined just like a vector norm, uh, but q is this quaternion variable, and so q times q star square root, um, and so that's just if we use the definition of, uh, of the conjugate up here, um, q times q star square root is just going to give us q naught squared plus q1 squared plus q2 squared plus q3 squared square root, uh, which is as you might have anticipated it would be. And so then we can define a unit quaternion as a quaternion such that the square root of the sum of the squares of all its components just equals to 1 um, in the uh, logical way. So any unit quaternion, so any quaternion that satisfies a relation the, uh, the, the norm of q is equal to 1, may be written in the form q is equal to the u phi for some unit vector u vec norm is equal to 1. So u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared, remember u vec is a three component vector, u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared square root is equal to 1. If we have that, um, we call it, then, then that's a, a, a unit vector of, of length 3. And so a unit quaternion may always be written as q is equal to e to the u phi for a unit vector, where e to the u phi can be written out like that. So any unit quaternion uh, we can write like that. And so um, cos squared plus sine squared um, and this thing squared of equal 1, cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. Um, so that will build up any unit quaternion. Okay, so now we can define the notion of an inverse. So we can take q times this thing that we'll call q inverse um, is equal to 1. And applying the above relationships, uh, it's seen that then this q inverse thing is quite simply q star over the norm squared of q. Um, you can see that, for instance, just by taking this definition, multiplying it from the left by q star. So q star times q is just equal to the norm of q squared times q inverse is equal to q star divided by the norm of q squared. You get that. All right, so now um, one final step, um, now that we have the notion of how to multiply together some p and q, we can also write it um, using dot products and cross products. And so I want you to go back to your vector calculus, take a peek at your definition of the dot product and the cross product, and verify that I did this correctly. So if we write out p in terms of its real part and its vec part, um, and q in terms of its real part and its vec part, um, and multiply those together, then um, we will get a bunch of terms, as we had here, we'll get 16 terms, and we can arrange them in this form. So please, again, pause the visit video and check this and make sure that I did that right. Okay, um, so now that we've confirmed that, um, then we're ready to jump in and do the big proof. The big proof uh, is to show that 3D rotations may be done with quaternions. So the theorem statement is that if we start with u vec um, as being um, a, uh, a, a unit vector, so u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared is equal to 1, um, and so u vec is a unit vector, and q is a unit quaternion that we can build from u vec. So again, as we were discussing back here, we'll take q is equal to e to the u vec phi, it's equal to cos phi plus u vec sine phi. It's going to have four components that the sum of the squares of those four components is equal to 1, as we were discussing before. Now, if we start with any p vec, um, so p vec is some vector in, uh, in, in R3, p1 in the i direction, p2 in the j direction, and p3 in the k direction in some right-handed coordinate system. Um, and we're going to define theta as being uh, 2 phi, where phi is the angle that's used to find q. Then it can be shown that p prime is equal to q times p sorry, p vec prime is equal to q times p vec times q star simply gives the rotation that comes out of Rodriguez's rotation formula. Remember, before we wrote it, uh, p vec is equal to r times p, uh, p vec, sorry, 
Before we wrote it as PVEC prime is equal to R times PVEC, where R was the rotation matrix. Now we're going to write it um, in terms of uh, quaternion arithmetic, and so we're going to interpret, for the purpose of doing the multiplications here, we're going to interpret P as a quaternion with zero real part, um, and we're going to multiply together the quaternion Q, the vector P interpreted as a quaternion times the quaternion Q star and we're going to see out from this will pop exactly Rodriguez's rotation formula. And so I'm going to leave the arithmetic of this um, which is a little bit of algebra and it will come back to this expression um, that uh, in, uh, introduces cross products and dot products and some simplifications um, using this body of algebra. I want you to connect the dots and um, simplify this expression after you multiply it out, simplify it back down, and what you'll get is exactly Rodriguez's rotation formula. And you can find um, the intermediate algebra in the course notes, but I want you to, using your own pen, write this out every step of the way in order to connect the dots between uh, this quaternion product expression and Rodriguez's rotation formula. I think that's a very rewarding thing to do. So go ahead and pause the video and do that. Once you come uh, back from that, then we have established a very useful way of performing rotations using quaternion arithmetic. And so anytime I have a rotation to perform, I can just write it down as a quaternion, multiply three quaternions together, and I have my rotated uh, vector. If I start with some vector in R3, um, some vector in R3, do this quaternion multiplication, I'll get some rotation which gives me some new vector in R3 that corresponds to that rotation. Now, um, it, can be, uh, it can be also shown um, that um, the uh, P prime that comes from this product, so now that we have this product and we have this form which shows uh, what happens when we uh, perform a product between two quaternions, so just looking at this expression and this definition for, uh, for what a quaternion multiplication is in terms of a matrix vector product and multiply that out, uh, it can be shown, and you gather all the terms together, it can be shown that P prime is equal to Q P Q star can be written quite simply as P prime is equal to some matrix times P um, in this vector form where this matrix is exactly that. So again, one more time, pause the Visio um, and check. Take the product of these three vectors together, apply that relationship, and you should get this for the matrix that corresponds to that product. Once you come back, then um, just to clean up an, a couple of items at the end here, um, noting that if um, Q is a unit quaternion and R is a unit quaternion, and we define S as the product of those two unit quaternions, um, with Q on the right and R on the left, um, then it follows that S itself is a unit quaternion. That's a simple proof to do. You might take a, 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 a quick pause and, and check and make sure you can verify that. Um, and so finally then, if we think of one rotation performed uh, on P, performed as a pre-multiplication by Q and a post-multiplication by Q star to get P vec prime, and a second rotation of the resulting vector. Um, so we start with this rotation and then we take the result of that and do another rotation by some uh, unit quaternion R. Um, and so we pre and post multiply uh, P vec prime by R and R star to get P vec double prime. Then what we have is P vec double prime is just equal to S times the original P uh, times, times S star. And so to, uh, to, to perform consecutive rotations, so if we first want to do a rotation um, Uh, yes, that's right. Um, it's non-commutative algebra, so you have to be very careful about the order. So it was right the first time. So if you first want to um, rotate by Q and then rotate by R, and you want to say, okay, what's the ultimate effect of that? It's equivalent to rotating by S, where S is equal to RQ. So instead of applying Q and Q star to P and then applying R and R star to P prime, we can just calculate R times Q and apply S and S star to P and we'll get to the same final location. So you can see that um, this quaternion 
um, formulation then gives us a very convenient way to represent each of a number of rotations um, and, uh, and pull them together. And we can interpret quaternion rotation um, in terms of a simple matrix, a rotation matrix R, uh, and the equivalence between the rotation matrix and the quaternion expression um, is given here. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to also give an understanding of a rotation matrix R in terms of quantities like pitch roll and yaw, so Euler rotation se sequences and Tate-Bryan rotation sequences, and um, begin to tie all of these um, uh, representations together and understand in some applications, pitch roll and, ah, and yaw will be convenient and intuitive and, uh, and, and useful, but in other uh, applications, we'll see that that um, that representation of rotation is inadequate and we need to uh, uh, come back to the quaternion representation. We'll discuss the details of that in the next video.